Every season, we tell you what is best, assuming you want to be a sweaty tryhard. But sometimes, what works best at higher ratings doesn't always work best for you. Maybe you're an LFG grinder who wants to have some quick wins at lower ratings. In today's video, we handpick some specs that do really well at lower ratings. So stay tuned to see what you should be playing if you want to absolutely crush people at low MMR. First things first, we have a massive disclaimer for this video. We intentionally selected classes that are slightly off meta. At this point, we don't have to tell you that rogues or Destro Warlocks are broken because we've already done that at least 9,000 times. It's over 9,000! What 9,000? Instead, we selected some specs that are a bit less popular but have the tendency to catch low rated teams off guard. Just like you might get caught off guard by our 250 rating gain guarantee at skillcap.com slash wow. Yes, that is right. We are so confident in your results that we offer a full refund if you don't gain at least 250 rating while actively using our website. Joining today will give you access to over 600 premium videos and an invite to the member exclusive section of our Discord, which includes having access to support from expert players. So what are you waiting for? Join over half a million users in the best learning experience WoW has to offer. Visit skillcap.com slash WoW today. With that in mind, let's start things off with Melee, which has multiple options for a noob smashing experience. First though, let's establish some criteria. To excel at low rating, Melee specs need three key things. The first is durability, which makes mistakes less punishing. The second is high damage, to pressure your opponents. And the third is uptime, to maintain this pressure and coerce your opponent into making more mistakes. If you've been on the forums, you know many people hate Demon Hunters, and if you've played as a healer into one, you probably understand why. Demon Hunters simply have it all, an easy damage rotation, great defensives, and a disgusting amount of mobility. This allows them to stick on their target and output an insane amount of damage. Demon Hunters have one of the longest damage CDs in the game with Metamorphosis, lasting almost 40 seconds. This grants them 25% haste and upgrades two of their deadliest spells, Chaos Strike and Blade Dance. This is further amplified by their two set damage, amping those same two spells by 25%. Let's not forget that the majority of DH damage is cleave damage, which makes the enemy healer's job that much harder. With just these factors alone, you can see how a DH can overwhelm a low rating team with their damage output. But it doesn't end there, as Demon Hunters also come equipped with great utility and personal defenses, which can keep you safe if your healer isn't performing to the best of their ability. Demon Hunters have great passive magic damage reduction with Demonic Wards, which is elevated by the Viscous Ink Conduit to reduce all magic damage by around 20%. They also have access to Blur on a 43 second cooldown with their Fell Defender Conduit. This enables them to have great uptime on a 50% dodge and 20% damage reduction buff throughout the game. Demon Hunters also have the choice between Netherwalk and Soul Rending. Are you fighting a bursty team? Netherwalk grants you 6 seconds of immunity, allowing your healer time to recover after you drop low. If not, Soul Rending grants Demon Hunters a flat 10% leech, which increases to 30% in Metamorphosis. This means Demon Hunters can self sustain and stay in combat for longer. Demon Hunters are hard to kill without a coordinated team locking them down with stuns, and we know at lower ratings, coordination can be lacking, which lets Demon Hunters wreak havoc and stay alive. What makes Demon Hunters even better at lower rating is their ability to not only keep themselves alive, but their team. With Darkness positioned as a great personal or team defensive option, and Reverse Magic allowing you to free your healer from CC, you can carry your team by covering your teammates' mistakes. So in summary, Demon Hunter is a great melee spec to play at low rating, where teams are less coordinated and more likely to make mistakes. A damage CD that lasts 40 seconds, great mobility, and a high amount of uptime that lets them stick to their targets, it's easy to see why Demon Hunter are so reviled. DH is not alone for noob stomping, and one spec they like to pair with is Unholy DK, which is the next melee on our list. No doubt about it, you faced an Unholy DK only to be one shot during the opener and wondered what just happened to you. Enter Abomination Limb. 9.2 did Unholy DK's two giant favors, introducing double legendaries and buffing Abomination Limb. This has led to the ability doing ungodly amounts of damage. With the patch came a flat 20% buff to Abomination Limb's damage, as well as its respective conduit, Brutal Grasp being stuffed to 30% damage up from 15%, resulting in Abomination Limb doing 35% more damage than before. This doesn't factor in the legendary Abomination's Frenzy, which DKs now have access to. This increases Abomination Limb's duration by 4 seconds and causes all damage from the DK towards their target to be increased by 20% in that time. This CD is now powerful enough to shred an entire team 
team in a matter of seconds, leading to teams overcommitting defensive CDs in a desperate attempt to stay alive. When a DK pops Abomination Limb, it grips the entire team in and allows them to follow up with Unholy Blight, Dark Transformation buffed by Unholy Pact, and Unholy Assault, resulting in an unhealable amount of cleave pressure unless CDs are traded. There really isn't anything quite like running in at the start of the arena, pressing your one-shot macro, and watching the enemy team desperately try to flee, only to be gripped back to you and their health bars depleting all the while. This is why DKs are such a threat at low rating. When you're facing overwhelming damage output, panic sets in and CDs are popped. It's easy in the moment to overcompensate for the DK's damage output and inefficiently trade CDs, which will inevitably cause issues later in the game. DKs also come equipped with a lot of healing reduction effects, which puts heavy pressure onto enemy healers. DKs can make the enemy healer's life a living hell with the Necrotic Wounds PvP talent in combination with Necromancer's Bargain. Necrotic Wounds provides a 30% healing reduction, and Necromancer's Bargain tags the target with Crypt Fever, ensuring that the target suffers a heavy dot effect whenever they receive healing. This means the enemy healer is constantly having to outheal Crypt Fever's damage, all while having their own healing reduced by Necrotic Wounds. DKs also excel at low rating due to being difficult to peel and kill. Fortunately, Arthas equipped his Death Knights with the perfect tools to pick apart enemy casters. Did Arthas hate magic? Because Anti-Magic Shell grants immunity to magic effects and damage, and Anti-Magic Zone projects a barrier which reduces magic damage for your teammates inside it. DKs also have access to Spell Warden, a PvP talent which further reduces magic damage taken. Although Arthas might have hated mages, DKs did end up having decent resistance to physical damage as well. They are plate wearers after all, and are naturally durable when facing physical damage dealers. Icebound Fortitude also grants immunity to stuns and a 30% damage reduction, making them much more durable. The healing granted by Death Strike also allows DKs to self-sustain through longer fights. So here's what the enemy has to deal with when they face you down as one of Arthas's chosen. Incredible cleave damage, unpeelable pressure, and an unrelenting juggernaut who needs a village to be brought down. When an unholy DK rides into battle, nothing of the enemies is safe, not their cooldowns, their HP, or their morale. With melee out of the way, let's move on to ranged DPS with two interesting picks. At lower ratings, ranged DPS specs need unavoidable damage, which can't be kicked or lined, good control to lock down and pressure enemy healers, and good burst, which can catch your opponents off guard. We are sure you have fought an MM Hunter only to be sent back to the Ouroboros loading screen as soon as they came out of stealth and hit you with the 1-2 Mayweather combo. Don't worry, we've all been there. MM Hunters are unique in a few ways. One being they can do the majority of their burst from stealth, and the second being that they have one of the shortest burst cooldowns in the game with Double Tap. When the game starts, a MM Hunter will open up with a double tap aimed shot, which will be buffed by the careful aim talent, which increases aimed shots damage by 50% against targets above 70%, and then receive a second aimed shot thanks to double tap, which will be instant cast and do 100% more damage. After that, they will channel a rapid fire. This is enough damage to force cooldowns out of any team. Not only that, but after a minute passes, they can do it all over again, allowing for a constant stream of one shot pressure throughout the match. MM Hunter burst damage can be further amplified through the Necrolord Covenant, adding Death Chakrams into your burst rotation. But I got one more thing for you damage fiends. Bag of Munitions. This Necrolord Legendary buffs your damage output by applying Explosive Shot to targets hit by Death Chakram. So if you haven't already done enough damage to one-shot your enemy's HP and their desire to re another arena, Bag of Munitions gives you just that extra chunk of damage needed to obliterate the enemy team's morale. And if doing all their damage from stealth wasn't enough, what if their damage was also unlineable? At low rating, any team's reaction to getting bursted by a ranged class is to get to the nearest pillar and pray. Well, let's just say that their prayers won't be answered by anyone if the hunter they are facing is Kyrian. With the Resonating Arrow Covenant ability causing any players hit by it to not be able to line of sight the hunter as well as being afflicted by a debuff causing them to have a 30% increased chance of being critically hit. Anyone fighting this combo will be hearing the hunter say, you can run but you cannot hide. On top of this, hunters come equipped with enough peels for themselves and their teammates to live long enough to reach their next burst window in the game. Any melee that's fought an MM hunter knows how hard they are to stick to. Being the one hunter spec that has access to binding shot without having to invest talent points into it, as well as having post haste. This makes them extremely hard to stick to. On top of having a freedom and master's call, aspect of the cheetah, and multiple knockbacks and bursting shot and high explosive trap, it's pretty safe to say MM hunters are anti melee. 
At low rating, people are slow to react, and when they do, they tend to overuse cooldowns, especially versus a single target burst threat like an MM Hunter. The thing is, while most defensive CDs are two minutes or more, a Hunter's burst is one minute, which results in favorable trades almost every time. And with the ability to peel themselves and help their teammates survive with Roar of Sacrifice, Scatter Shots, Roots, and Knockbacks, they can ensure that they survive long enough to close out games on their own. Mark's Hunters might be the burst gods, but what if you want to have a damage contest? Do you want a guaranteed win when you make the classic bet between your friends of who will deal the most damage? Look no further than Affliction Warlock. This spec, if played right, will almost always land at the top of the damage charts in the final scoreboard. With their wide array of damage over time effects, further enhanced by certain talents like Rive and Agony and Rapid Contagion, any Affliction Warlock is a nightmare to play against for a healer. Affliction Warlocks have perhaps the most sustained rot pressure of any spec in the game, but sustain is not all Warlocks bring to the table. Their burst is unlike any other class in the game, allowing you to rot a whole team even if they aren't stacked and in a short amount of time. This burst comes from the Warlock taking advantage of their Night Fae Covenant ability Soul Rot and their legendary Claws of Endereth. With these two factors, Drain Life deals heavy damage to multiple targets simultaneously. Their dots can be further enhanced with Dark Soul Misery and the PvP talent Rapid Contagion. This lets the Warlock burst an entire team even without line of sight as long as they have their dots already applied, rendering the damage essentially unavoidable. At low rating, healers struggle to outheal spread pressure, and this is what Affliction Warlocks excel at. At a given moment, you might see your team's HP trickling down incredibly slowly, but then suddenly the enemy Warlock pops their CDs and your team's health pool drops as fast as your rating after an LFG Q section. Warlocks possess a relatively unique CC in Fear, which remains one of the only spammable CC spells in the game. And unlike Destruction and Demonology specs, Affliction Warlock's Fear comes equipped with one of the best dispel protections in the game. I'm sure anyone that's tried to dispel an Unstable Affliction has regretted it almost instantly, as when dispelled, Unstable Affliction silences for 4 seconds and deals an insane amount of burst damage. I personally don't know any priests that have cast mass dispel against an Affliction Warlock and live to tell the tale. So, Affliction Warlocks have sustained burst pressure, sustained damage pressure, and spammable CC that can't easily be dispelled. Besides this, they have good mobility options in Demonic Circle Teleport and Demonic Gateway, as well as great durability through multiple self-healing options. This makes them a forgiving spec to play at low ratings, as you can apply consistent pressure through your damage, but also get yourself out of sticky situations. If you choose to play Affliction Warlock, you know you will consistently be on top of the details meters, and at the same time make the enemy healers you battle wish they had never queued up that morning as they watched their whole team die to a row of dots while being feared over and over again. With DPS out of the way, let's finish up with healers. A healer who can exert control on the battlefield, heal their allies, and avoid CC all on their own will be able to effectively carry low-rated games. Big single target heals that counter the burst meta are especially valuable, as well as tools which can CC high DPS targets. While Resto Druids are not that prevalent at higher ratings, they are one of the best healers to carry with at low ratings. Being able to apply a bunch of hots to your team and then run off on your own to set up long CC chains is more effective at low ratings where people are less likely to expect the healer to have so much agency over the game. Resto Druids are the healer with the most CC in the game. They are equipped with Cyclone, Bash, Disorienting Roar with Guardian Affinity, and Rake and Maim with Feral Affinity. A Resto Druid can potentially CC three members of the enemy team at once, all while keeping their own team healthy and ready to follow up. Druids also excel against inexperienced players due to how difficult they are to crowd control. Being able to shapeshift hexes, polymorphs, and repentances makes it hard for any single shaman, mage, or paladin to land meaningful CC without a stun as set up. Here's what a good Resto Druid can do. They can rake Cyclone a healer out of stealth, bash a DPS, and then maim their kill target all within a few globals. No other healer can triple CC a team that easily without them being stacked. This enables Resto Druids to make more aggressive plays at lower ratings where they are less likely to be punished. One of the first things you learn when climbing the ladder is don't stack. Don't make it easy for the enemy to triple CC you and follow up with huge damage. Something that takes a little longer to learn is respecting the potential of every spec. Lower rated players probably won't expect a healing spec to make aggressive plays and execute triple CC, leaving them open to exploitation. 
Druids are also very difficult to kill outside of coordinated setups, and we all know that at low rating, recklessly charging the healer is the go-to option for melee cleaves. The Thorns PvP talent allows the Druid to sit in bear form with Guardian Affinity and stare down any would-be assassins as they quickly deplete their own health bar. 9.2 has proven to be one of the highest damage patches in WoW history, and huge sustained heals are needed more than ever. Resto Druids come equipped with one heal that can completely carry their HPS. Scenarian Ward. This hot alone is enough to carry most of their healing outside burst windows, especially in 2v2. At higher ratings, players will recognize when a Resto Druid is pumping out big single target heals and hots on a target, and swap targets accordingly, putting pressure on the Druid themselves or a potential second ally. But at lower ratings, the last thing DPS players want to do is swap off their current target. This lets Resto Druids run rampant and keep their team topped at all times. And when that isn't enough, the Druid can also reduce enemy damage by rooting or cloning melee DPS as they pop big CDs. Having an undispellable CD in the form of Cyclone is also incredibly valuable and provides your team with the peel needed to survive 9.2. There really aren't a lot of healers that can do what a good Resto Druid can do at low ratings. Resto Druids have a lot of options in terms of control, healing, and self defenses, which can put them in command of their game and enable them to carry their team to victory. So, just to recap, all these classes have a lot of things in common. They capitalize on mistakes enemy players make, while being forgiving enough for the user to cover up their own. With the ability to immense cleave damage or single target pressure, or even one-shot people out of stealth, the DPS classes have the ability to solo win many of their games by overwhelming the enemy team. Resto Druids, on the other hand, can keep their teammate and themselves topped almost automatically, granting them a high degree of agency that synergizes well with their damage and CC options. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one, and we hope you learned a lot. If you like what you saw in this video, consider checking out our newly redesigned courses at skillcap.com slash wow. Our site is proven to work, and with a money back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Visit the link in the description to learn more. In any case, we thank you all for watching. See you soon.